Hello and welcome to this new series. In today's video, we shall learn about the common respiratory sounds that are heard in children. So let's get started. Respiratory sounds are sounds originating from the respiratory system, which may indicate an underlying pathology. These can be a symptom, a sign or both and may be heard with or without a stethoscope. As one goes lower into the respiratory tract, the pitch of the sound increases. For example, a simple snore which originates from the oropharynx is a low-pitched sound. Listen to the following sounds and try to match these sounds with the following options. Sound number 1. What you just heard was a wheeze, which is an expiratory sound. We will learn more about wheezing in the later part of the video. Sound number two. That was grunting, which is also an expiratory sound. Did you get that right? Let's move on to the next sound. course that was snoring and that is an inspiratory sound. Let's move on to our final two options and try to guess which one is strider and which one is rattling. Okay and finally As you may have guessed, the first one was strider, which has both an inspiratory and an expiratory component. And the second was rattling, which is inspiratory. Confused? Didn't get any of those right? Don't worry, it takes practice. As Erin Yeager said, if you think reality is living comfortably and following your own whims, can you seriously call yourself a doctor? Now let's move on to see where these sounds originate from. So snoring is due to a simple oropharyngeal obstruction. Grunting is due to partial closure of the glottis. Rattling is due to retained secretions in the trachea or bronchi. Strider is due to obstruction of the larynx or trachea and wheeze is due to lower airway obstruction which results in its high-pitched sound. Now let us learn about wheezing in detail. As we already know, it is high-pitched and it is audible without auscultation. Wheezing is caused due to the obstruction in bronchi or bronchioles. Now let us check out what causes this obstruction. Firstly, we have low respiratory tract infections which are so commonly seen in children between 3 to 8 years of age. This causes heightened sensitivity of the respiratory tract, leading to bronchospasm, resulting in wheezing. And these can be relieved by use of bronchodilators. Bronchiolitis and bronchial asthma are two other common causes. Tropical eosinophilia is mostly seen in adults and it's caused by Dirophilaria emitis, Usheraria bancrofti or B. malayi. Eosinophil count is markedly increased in tropical eosinophilia. Treatment is with diethyl carbamazine. Loeffler syndrome is due to the migration of Ascaris lava through the lungs. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis is an autoimmune condition in which your lungs become inflamed. Very commonly, foreign bodies may cause unilateral localized wheeze. Some rare causes include enlarged mediastinal nodes as seen in TB, anomalous left pulmonary artery which compresses the right main bronchus, cystic fibrosis, pulmonary Strider Strider indicates upper respiratory obstruction. 
it is very common in infants because of their small larynx loose connective tissue around the glottis and rigid cricoid cartilage around the subglottic area it may be acute or chronic acute strider accompanies inflammation and edema resulting from an infection like epiglottitis or infectious crew this may be life threatening the obstruction can either be supraglottic or subglottic let us go through some of the differences between supraglottic and tracheal obstruction firstly the strider is inspiratory in supraglottic and usually expiratory in tracheal obstruction tracheal obstruction is usually more serious than a supraglottic one the cry in supraglottic is muffled while it is normal in tracheal obstruction there is more dyspnea in tracheal obstruction as compared to supraglottic obstruction the cough is usually deep barking brassy in tracheal obstruction and may or may not be present in supraglottic obstruction the most common cause for chronic strider is laryngomalacia it is usually seen in the end of the first week or during the second week after birth it is aggravated by crying or feeding and disappears in the prone position the child may adopt a characteristic posture the other common causes are laryngotracheal stenosis or laryngeal web laryngeal cysts neoplasms hydrocephalus and down syndrome angioma papilloma lymphangioma constitute the neoplasm causes of strider strider can also be caused due to external causes such as vascular rings mediastinal goiter lymphangioma and thyroglossal duct cyst diagnosis direct laryngoscopy can be used to diagnose congenital laryngeal strider fluoroscopy after barium swallow is required to rule out extrinsic obstruction treatment tumors and cysts can be surgically excised edema can be treated with corticosteroids most infants with congenital laryngeal strider do not require any treatment in the next part we will learn about pneumonia in children thank you